talk, talk show radio host for uh, Raging Elephants Radio and a uh, huge constitutionalist and American, great American, Doc Green. Thank you. Thank you very much. RagingElephantsRadio.com. Y'all say that with me. RagingElephantsRadio.com. One more time. RagingElephantsRadio.com. Because I'm not going to be able to put a card in everybody's hand. And if you want to know what's going on in Texas, you're going to find out about that at RagingElephantsRadio.com. That's right. I am glad to be down here today. And we are here today because we understand that God gave every one of us here a right and a responsibility to defend ourselves against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Now, chances are you know some people that maybe they're not comfortable with firearms. Maybe they don't have firearms. But it is your responsibility to protect those people that cannot protect themselves. At the same time, it's also your responsibility to operate within your rights to keep and bear arms. The Constitution of the United States says keep and bear arms. Now, they're not granting you a right. They're recognizing a God-given right. And they used the word arms. They didn't say handguns, did they? They didn't say single-shot revolvers, did they? They said arms. That means if you can afford to buy an army tank, you should have as many as you can afford to buy. If you can afford 50 caliber machine guns, you want to strap one on your car, you should be able to do that. That is a God-given right. It is not, it's not a government right. The government cannot grant you these rights. And maybe you don't believe in God. Then look at natural law. Natural law says that you are able to defend yourself. And that is your right and your responsibility. So that's why we're here today, because somebody was out trying to demonstrate that they had a God-given right to do that, and they were deprived of that right. Now, we appreciate the police department here for recognizing that and, and realizing that their best friend is an armed American. Because where there are guns, you do not have crime. Look at the school systems today. Our legislature, who is allegedly conservative and allegedly pro-gun, fail to pass a law that would allow you to carry a gun on a college campus even if you have a license. So you've got to ask yourself the question, do we have the people in Austin that we need to have up there? And the answer is, of course, no. It is a God-given right. If you, want to, if you really believe that children are our heritage, if you really believe that children are the most precious thing that we have, and I can tell you, I've got four of them and nine grandchildren, wouldn't we want people in our schools that are armed? Wouldn't we want the bad guys, the guys that decided to commit suicide and to do it at school, wouldn't we want them to know that if you go to school, you're going to have about 60 seconds to do what you can do before somebody takes you out? We have two things to look at. If you listen to my radio show, you heard me talk about it this week. At the Lone Star College, which is just down the street from my studio, we had a slasher come on there with a dollar plastic razor knife. And he spent over an hour down there chasing down students and slashing pretty young girls' faces before the police got there. Then, he didn't have a gun, did he? A friend of mine who is a professor at that college who has a CHL didn't have a gun either because it was against the law for him to carry that on the college campus. And quite frankly, he likes his job. Let's contrast that with the shooting in Colorado here recently. The guy went in, began to shoot people. They had a resource officer on staff that was in plain clothes and had a gun. The entire event lasted 80 seconds. 80 seconds. As soon as the perpetrator seen a resource officer with a gun, he committed suicide. Simply the presentation of a weapon made all the difference. And that is why the police, particularly here in Harlington and in a few other places now, they recognize an armed citizen is their best friend. Because crimes don't take place when you have armed citizens. So I just want to tell you that I'm with you. I am here. You see, I got my uh, free 18 business on here. I'm here because I support you. I am one of you. And I love you guys. And I'm asking every one of you to please listen to the radio station because we are going to cover every candidate that is running for office. And if you listen to Raging Elephants Radio, 
you're going to be able to understand who these guys are. And maybe for some of you, for the first time in your life, you're going to walk into a voting booth and you're going to know those guys. You're going to understand what you're voting for. And I encourage every one of you, as the first speaker here today said, it's not about Republicans or Democrats, it's about Americans. I adjure you, do not vote straight Republican. Don't vote straight Democrat either. Pick and choose. Find the constitutional candidates, guys like Johnny Johnson that are here. Mary Halls. Dwayne Stovall is running for Senate. He's challenging the rhino John Cornyn. If you don't know who Dwayne Stovall is, you can listen to my show. I have him on every now and then. The guy is a solid constitutionalist businessman. And he's a much better choice than the current rhino John Cornyn or even Steve Stockman, who is a career politician. So I'm hoping that you're going to find out who Dwayne Stovall is and give him a serious listen. So finally, let me just finish with this. We're in a war. This is a war. Johnny didn't get into it as much as I thought he might, but they declared war on us in 1961 when they passed a law that said they were going to disarm every American. They were going to disarm our military, and they were going to put all of those arms in the hands of people who wear blue helmets. 1961, that law was passed. None of you knew it. That is what is going on behind closed doors in Washington. And we are here, like Joyce Schaefer sang in the song, to take our country back. This is not what we want. It is absolutely important to understand that we are in a war. Now we can fight this war several ways. Right now we're fighting this war with words. We're fighting this war at the ballot box. When you are an educated consumer and you go into that ballot box and you don't vote straight party, you go into that ballot box and you pick and choose. Because there's some good libertarians, there's some good independents, there's a handful of good Republicans. I'm sure somewhere there's a good Democrat. I'm not, I, don't, I couldn't name them. But you've got to pick and choose. You've got to know that. So we fight this war with words, we fight it with ballots, and then finally we fight it with numbers. Glad to see this turnout today. But I'm a little disappointed because at the Alamo, we had well over 1,200 people at the Alamo. I am a Texas Independence representative. I would like to, there should be a hundred TNM guys here today, Texas Nationalist Movement, but there are not. And I want to know why. Because we are in a war. If we win this war with words, with votes, and with numbers, the war will be won, our children will live in freedom, that will be the end of it. But if you fail to fight this war with votes, and numbers and words. This battle is going to be fought with real bullets, real guns, and the blood of our children and our grandchildren. I cannot urge you enough to not let it get to that point. I am begging you guys to do what the Terry Holcomb plan is. The Terry Holcomb plan is for every one of you guys to get three people. Get your little finger in their buttonhole. Look them in the eye and make sure that they make it to the polls to vote. Make sure that they understand what is at stake. I like this lady back here with the uh, de sheepified shirt. That is fabulous. It's time that we become de sheepified It's time that we become what the government fears, and that is a government of the people. And that is the problem. We have them surrounded, but most of the people are asleep. It is our job to awaken them to what is going on, to let them know that in 1961, our politicians passed a law behind closed doors to disarm the American people. Even though the Second Amendment, recognizing a God-given right, it says right in the legislation it's inviolate, it can never be removed. Because if you remove it, the entire Constitution becomes null and void. So that's all I have to say to you people. God bless you, God bless Texas, and most importantly, will the people of Texas bless God. Thank you.